All right, bitches, I've still got 23 hours of Musou games to play for Big J. You know what that means? That means it's time for some goddamn Dynasty Warriors 6 is what that means. At the end of the second century, the later Han Dynasty was approaching its end. It was a time of war, beginning with a popular uprising known as the Yellow Turban Rebellion. It was during this time that one provincial governor came to prominence. His name was Dong Zhuo. Taking advantage of the turbulence surrounding the plot to exterminate the palace units, Dong Zhuo seized power and began a reign of tyranny. In response, the governors formed an alliance and moved to overthrow him. Among the many heroes to march for the alliance were an ambitious Cao Cao and his officer Shao Dun. In my position, as a descendant of Confucius, I cannot allow Dong Zhuo's villainy. I'm pleased to hear that. As leader of the White Riders, I promise you, that the victory will belong to us. Hmm. Is this why each of these great lords gathered to brag about himself? They are fools. Cousin, is it really worth our while to take their side? The name Cao Cao will know renown all across the land. That's reason enough for now. But I require help from others in order for my plan to succeed. I am depending upon you. Have I ever disappointed you? There is no need to worry. I shall cut you a path to fame and glory. Alright, so for Dynasty Warriors, Zhao Houdun is kind of my go-to guy. Play as him in Dynasty Warriors Strike Force, play as him pretty much anywhere he's available in Dynasty Warriors, and that includes Dynasty Warriors 6. So, uh, Dynasty Warriors 6 is a bit of a departure from the Dynasty Warriors games before it. Dynasty Warriors is probably best known for its combo system, where you mix light and heavy attacks together. You press square, then triangle to get a special combo, square, square, triangle to get another special combo, and so forth. Dynasty Warriors 6 doesn't work that way. You have two completely separate sets of combos in Dynasty Warriors 6, one where you mash square, and one where you mash triangle. That's uh, quite a difference. Saying the combo system was streamlined is a big understatement. This pretty much changes everything about how the combat works. Combos no longer serve specific utilities, you just have your square combo if you feel like attacking infinitely and quickly, and you have your triangle combo if you feel like attacking less infinitely, but dealing more damage and breaking blocks. You can also hold triangle for a particularly powerful heavy attack, but basically, what this new combo system allows you to do is mash square more than ever. Y your square combo just goes on forever, it doesn't have an end in Dynasty Warriors 6. From looking around, it really seemed like the new combat system in Dynasty Warriors 6 drew a lot of criticism, especially from fans of Dynasty Warriors. Mostly because, you know, a lot of people liked the combo system in Dynasty Warriors. It's kind of what it was best known for, is the crazy combos that were easy to, easy to pull off and how all of the characters had their own distinctive crazy combos. And they all served unique utilities. And that's kind of gone in Dynasty Warriors 6. But for me... I'm not really bothered, mostly because any change from what's expected in a Musou game is just something that I find enjoyable. Like, is this game simpler than the other Dynasty Warriors games before it and after it? It seems so to me. Seems like there's a lot less depth here in the combat, but it's still a new w a new way to play a Musou game, a kind of new take on the uh, on the genre. It's a simpler take, and there's a lot less to fuck up. And it's a lot easier to grind because of the simplified system. But combat with officers is now completely different as a result. Like, you no longer rush up to an officer 
uh, and then circle him thinking about which combo is best to use or already have a combo in mind to use or try and clear out the enemies around him. No, you just uh, you just press triangle or hold triangle when it's time to break his block and you press square when his block is broken. And there's a grapple attack if you're feeling particularly frisky. I think another criticism was levied at the lack of playable characters. I think they did that because they gave each character a more well-defined story mode in this one. Like, all the characters get their own cutscenes and shit, and they mo-capped people for those cutscenes. So, I think it's a fair trade. I know a lot to a lot of people having a, l a large... A fuck ton of playable characters is a huge draw to Musou games, but that was never one of the draws to me. A Musou game could have one character, and I wouldn't mind as long as it was still engaging and fun. And I do like the story mode in Dynasty, or rather Musou mode in Dynasty Warriors 6. I do think it's uh, enjoyably cheesy. Enjoyably cheesy and over-romantic. As for the more in-depth mechanics that Dynasty Warriors 6 brought to the table... Changes in elevation are kind of a big deal now. In Dynasty Warriors 1 through 5, the map designs were kind of lackluster, kind of bland. In Dynasty Warriors 6, the map design's actually pretty great, because now you can go up and down, and it looks more natural in addition to giving you more vantage points, strategic places to attack from or to attack toward. I greatly appreciate that. And aside from the change in map and level design, there's the Rinbu Gauge, that thing to the left of Jahu Dun's icon over there. The Rinbu Gauge fills up when you get chain attacks on enemies, and uh, the higher the Rinbu Gauge goes, the more attacks are added to your square combo and triangle combo. Makes them longer, makes them deal more damage, makes them generally more effective, encourages you to be in the middle of combat slashing dudes almost all the time. It really wasn't a well-received addition. Again, I don't mind it at all. But it is a big departure from how the games worked before. It's not not like uh, in most Musou games, you have to unlock the ability to use your full combos during a match. Usually you unlock that ability outside of a match and then just carry it through the rest of the game. The Rimbu gauge kind of makes things a bit more arcadey. Something that I do absolutely have a criticism toward in Dynasty Warriors 6, though, is that if you lose a match, it just boots you straight back to the main menu. You get a game over, you go back to the main menu, there's no continue from the start of the level option, you have to reselect Muso mode, reselect the character you were using, reselect your fucking horse, and then you have to rewatch, well, rather skip any cutscenes and go past the battle prep menu to finally replay the stage you died on. That's just ridiculous. It may as well eject the game out of the fucking console if that's what it's going to do when I get a game over. Why does it goddamn deselect my horse? What kind of bullshit is that? Many Musou games handle getting a game over differently, but most of them at least let you restart from the stage you were on. Kin's Raids actually gives you mid-level checkpoints, like a, like a more modern action game would, and Dynasty Warriors Gundam lets you keep the experience when you lose. It still makes you start over from the beginning of the level, but you keep the experience. With Dynasty Warriors 6, it's like the game's, the game's going, oh, were you playing that? I didn't notice. My bad. Why would it be designed that way? That's such an outwardly sadistic way to handle game overing. Jesus. I don't mind if you don't want me to keep my experience. I don't mind if you don't want to give me checkpoints. You want me to start a whole level over? That's fine. I would really like if I could just start the whole level over, though, instead of having to reload my save from the main menu and reselect my horse. That doesn't really add additional challenge to the game. It's just obnoxious busy work. At least if it booted you straight to free mode, then you could interpret that as a snarky way of the game telling you to go grind, but it just boots you back to the main menu. Speaking of grinding, that's a thing you gotta do in a lot of mainline Dynasty Warriors games. This one is no exception. You can't really just play through Musou mode on normal mode like it's like it's gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay. You'll die super fast. You really gotta go grind in free mode for a bit. And that's just kind of something I came into the game expecting. That's just how Dynasty Warriors games work. 
not every game can be balanced like Ken's Rage or Hy Hyrule Warriors, you know. It does make me curious about most of the negative reviews that people write for Dynasty Warriors games. Usually they call it mindless. I feel like they must be playing it on easy or exclusively playing free mode or something if they're calling it mindless. Or maybe they only played the first level or, or so. Because it's it's only it's only mindless if uh if you have the foreknowledge that you need to grind. And the game doesn't like tell you that you're gonna need to grind. That's something you gotta figure out. Which it really should just tell you that you're gonna need to grind up front. Look at this. Look at that we're uh climbing on top of a, a battlement to destroy the uh the ballistas up here. That's not something you could do in previous Dynasty Warriors games. It's like this is a real setting with real battles. That's kinda cool. Isn't it? You know, having played Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, which are obviously the sequels to this, I can appreciate a lot of things are better about them, like the weapon switching system and the depth that adds to the combat, and the uh, the ambition mode in particular, I really love. But I think I still prefer playing Dynasty Warriors 6. There's just something about it that screams like, we really gotta wow people, this is Dynasty Warriors next gen. We gotta, we gotta the graphical effects and we gotta make the combat system completely different. We gotta place more emphasis on the actual war part of the battle with siege weapons. It's just, it's just kind of charming, I find. I find that charming. That being said, I do like Dynasty Warriors 9 better than any other game in the mainline Dynasty Warriors series, by far. Absolutely adore Dynasty Warriors 9. I, I'm, I was kind of surprised to hear that Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is coming to the Switch, I think. I don't see how Dynasty Warriors 9 would run so good on the Switch, but I look forward to, look forward to getting a peek at how that's going to work out. Whenever I say mainline Dynasty Warriors games, I do mean the numbered ones, 2 through 9. I don't think things like Strike Force are really mainline Dynasty Warriors games. Like, I, I like Strike Force a lot. Strike Force is kind of a weird spin off of Dynasty Warriors 6. Has basically the same character models and character lines and stuff. It's just really high fantasy as opposed to just kind of fantasy. Like, there's some platforming and lasers and giant, giant mechs. And uh, anyway, I don't think Strike Force counts as part of the main Dynasty Warriors series. I will say that it having the same voice lines does make it a little bizarre to play right alongside Dynasty Warriors 6. When you kill an officer in Dynasty Warriors 6, Zhao Hudun says, another victim has fallen to my blade. And when you kill an enemy officer in Strike Force, Zhao Hudun says, another victim has fallen to my blade. It happens a lot more frequently in Strike Force because Strike Force is a lot more focused on lock on combat. So you're killing officers a lot more frequency, frequently. So, yeah, I, I, hearing that so much between both games, the exact same take, hundreds of times, is a little surreal. I suppose that we should talk more about things Dynasty Warriors 6 does. Something Dynasty Warriors 6 does that I haven't seen in any of the other Dynasty Warriors games is when you're attacking an enemy officer, the surrounding regular enemies will just kind of encircle you both and let you duel. What is happening? Oh, look at that! It's Lupu! The way the enemies tend to encircle you in specific circumstances and let you duke it out with an enemy officer is just kind of neat. There's something really cinematic and dynamic about that. Oh, we killed Lubu's wife. Immediately. Oh, I guess she left. It's all good. Kind of funny that as soon as the cutscene happened where he appeared, we slaughtered his wife, though. You see how that big level up? That big level up? Thing appeared in the middle of the screen in gold letters, all caps gold letters. If you get a game over, that level up goes away. It's it kind of it kind of stings a little to see that giant gold embossed all caps level up when you know that if you lose the level, you don't get to keep it. 
So Lubu will kind of dick around by the gates, and we really don't want to fight him. We really just want to go after Dong Zhuo. Oh, that reminds me of, uh... So, in Dynasty Warriors 9, they had to record, like, thousands of voice lines for the cutscenes, because the story goes super in-depth in Dynasty Warriors 9. There's thousands of voiced lines. And it's fully voiced in English, too. And I'm sure that they had a pronunciation guide, like, somewhere, but sometimes the voice actors struggled. Almost everybody manages to pronounce Cao Cao's name properly. It's hard, especially if you only speak English. Cao Cao is kind of hard to say. Sometimes the voice actors goof up and say Cao Cao instead. Uh, and most egregiously, Cao Cao himself calls himself Cow Cow, which is comical. And there's also people that... People voice acting for the game that can't seem to believe that Dong Zhuo's name is Dong Zhuo, and they call him Doong. Like, maybe they were worried they'd get fired for calling one of the characters Dong, but no, that's just his name. The voice acting in Dynasty Warriors 6 is pretty good all around. They even got some high-profile voice actors to work on this. Lu Bu's voiced by Jameson Pierce, and I love Jameson Pierce's voice. You'll probably recognize a ton of familiar male voice actors. One, one character in particular has a really offensive voice. Uh, not just offensive to hear, but offensive because, wow, is that really what you think fat people sound like? Big the Cat is more dignified than this guy, but you'll see him, you'll see him soon. Anyway, while we're fighting Dong Zhuo, we, we want to be quick about it, because eventually Lu Bu will, will, come, yeah, will come back to Dong Zhuo and complicate this boss fight for us. So let's, uh, let's hurry up. Also, to those of you who have played a Dynasty Warriors game but have not played Dynasty Warriors 6 and are baffled why I'm not fighting the Yellow Turbans as the first level, I promise I didn't skip anything. That's just how Jahu Dune's story mode goes. You, you fight Dong Zhuo first. Everybody's story mode starts at a different place. I am not through yet. Another victim has fallen to my blade. Well fought, my friends. We have achieved victory. These results should suffice for now. The governor succeeded in deposing Dong Zhuo, and each soon began plotting to take power for themselves. Cao Cao took the emperor into custody to keep him out of political matters, and set up Xu Chang as his base, intent on steadily strengthening his position there. Liu Bei, who had also participated in the fight to bring down Dong Zhuo, paid a visit to Cao Cao to tell him that he had been entrusted with Xu province by Yan Qian, who had lost to Lu Bu in battle. Cao Cao agreed to Liu Bei's request to join forces and immediately sent troops to Xiaopi. Cousin, why must we give aid to a person like Liu Bei? I know that there is a dragon hiding behind his gentle manners and quick smile. When the dragon emerges, it will join its forces with mine or the dragons fated to be destroyed. I'd find that very pleasant. Still, if they will fight Lu Bu for us, I must give them my thanks. Come now, Doom. Is something wrong? You're not concentrating on the game. Losing at Go does not mean that I will lose in battle. Let's continue when I come back. Once I've defeated the enemy, I will return.
All right, let's keep the ball rolling. And I think you can see by these panning shots what I mean about the environments looking a lot nicer and more organic than in previous Dynasty Warriors games. And, uh, I mean, I, I like that it lets you get a kind of personal attachment to your horse easier with, with their goofy descriptions. Though in spite of them having really cool names and goofy descriptions, I'm not sure how attached I'm meant to get given the game deselects them every time I get a game over. Not gonna get over that, that's just weird and sadistic. I will say, by the way, that playing this game in co-op was a bit of a struggle. It is split-screen co-op, as most Dynasty Warriors and Musou games are, but I feel like maybe there could be a shared mini-map instead of there being two mini-maps, one for each player screen, because the mini-maps get too small to reliably actually see what's going on. Like, the mini-map's already pretty tiny. So I think having a big shared mini-map that goes across both screens would have been a better idea. Maybe that's an option that I just didn't bother to look at. That might be the case, and I might be being a big fool right now. But it, it would certainly make the game a lot easier to navigate. One of the biggest appeals to this kind of game, I think, is that, well, specifically the Dynasty Warriors Musou games, not all Musou games, is that it's kind of like an actual war is going on. All the units will clash and have their own tiny battles, and you can be the deciding force that sways how the individual battle goes individual battles go, rather. And the more you play the game, the more you learn about who's going to be where at what time, and how to intercept them, and what intercepting them might do, what triggers whose appearance, when. It's just kind of satisfying to learn these things about each, each battle, and how the tinier battles factor into the larger one, and how you can, like, sort of circumvent the win condition, or outright just get to the win condition faster than you're meant to. It's just fun. There's an element of thinking to it that you don't really have to engage with, but it's rewarding if you want to. I'm sorry about the scattershot, uh, scattershot approach to the commentary right now. I'm just thinking of general things about Dynasty Warriors and Dynasty Warriors 6 to talk about. Like, your items get sort of special effects on them. And ours, I think, freezes people, which is definitely my favorite, because it just stops them from hitting back. And that's immensely, uh, immensely useful, as you might imagine, when fighting an enemy officer. Because enemy officers are the real threat. Most of the maps have a kind of big enemy officer you need to fight in order to clear the map. And if you freeze the big enemy officer, that just makes the entire level easy, you know? You, ju you just get to win now, because they're frozen in place and you can keep wailing on them. Going, I'm sure there are various meta reasons that the other special effects that your weapons can obtain are valuable. Maybe even more valuable than the freezing effect. I just like the freezing effect because I can immediately see why it's useful. And it's made, made a lot of levels a lot, a lot more straightforward than they were probably meant to be for me. Our horse also has the freezing effect on it now. Our horse freezes people when we run over them sometimes. I think we're about to see what I mean by learning what triggers certain events and how you can circumvent them if you want to play the level a different way. What is that? Do you hear that sound? Child's play. As if mere water could stop me. Do you think I'm that easy to destroy? See, this is what I mean when you capture a specific base. In this level, it floods the place, and if you don't want to trigger the flood, then you avoid capturing that specific base. There are also certain officers you can defeat that trigger unique reactions or unique dialogue from Lu Bu, and it's just nice to learn how these things work, to see how the game is put together and how you interacting with the world triggers these things. Any challenge that you may be seeing across this playthrough, by the way, can easily be circumvented via grinding. I know I already talked a bit about grinding and how it's kind of mandatory, but you can go well beyond the mandatory grinding pretty easily and accidentally remove any kind of challenge from the game at all. I tried to grind just the right amount to maintain a kind of challenge while not making this hell for myself. 
But it's it's kind of hard to do that. It's really easy to go overboard. And it's really easy to find ways to go overboard. Like, you can find one or two maps that work really well for your level, and you can just rush through and, and kill a few high-experience officers and clear the level really quickly. There are ways to optimize grinding, of course, is what I'm saying. I did almost all of the grinding off-screen by myself, but some of the grinding I did with my roommate, Nathan, and he was playing as Guan Yu, and Guan Yu's moveset looks a lot more satisfying than Zhao Hu Dun's, but Zhao Hu Dun's my guy. I gotta play Zhao Hu Dun. And Nathan didn't exactly stick with Dynasty Warriors 6 for long. The way the game boots you back to the main menu and removes all your experience and deselects your horse and ejects the game disc into your face and explodes your PlayStation 3 kind of turned him off from playing anymore. Even though he's played a fair share of Musou games before, just really did not like this one. Because it's... Like, like I said, that's just kind of sadistic, isn't it? But even though he didn't really seem to enjoy it, he seemed to gain some, some satisfaction from some of the elements, like how high your horse jumps when you level it up all the way. He seemed pretty happy with that. It's nothing compared to the horses in Dynasty Warriors 9, of course, but it's still fun to watch him have such a good time playing with the horses. Who doesn't love horses? Everybody loves horses. You know, whenever my nose and throat do actually clear up and my voice returns completely to normal, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to recognize it, frankly. I've made so many videos while, while I've been having this problem. Did you know that horses can swim, by the way? Horses are great. I mean, this isn't really swimming, per se, right now. But they can sw Yeah, now, they're sw now we're swimming. Horses are my favorite animal. My second favorite animal is snakes. Horses are pretty great. Look, he's even swimming by himself. I don't know where the fuck he's going or anything, but he's doing it. The ability to swim and climb ladders was like an advertised feature of Dynasty Warriors 6, and a lot of people scoffed at that, but I think it changes things up. Like, I think that's a significant difference in the way you approach combat in the game. Gives you a new angle to approach from. Hey, Lubu, what's up? If you don't mind, I'm just going to inflict the freezing status on you real quick. Just make things a lot easier for me. The Dynasty Warriors Strike Force version of this level is nuts, but everything Dynasty Warriors Strike Force is nuts, so I'm not sure that's... I mean, I just thought it was particularly crazy, the way you platform across rooftops while Lubu's like a flying dragon monster human hybrid thing. Lubu is dead, and now I am the new Lubu. These results should suffice for now. Lubu was struck down in a desperate fight against Shah Hudun's forces. Afterwards, Cao Cao pressed Liu Bei to attack Yuan Shu, who had declared himself emperor. The true aim of Cao Cao was to have Liu Bei murdered, but the plot ended in failure. Cao Cao had made a lifelong enemy and let him escape into the world. Meanwhile, north of Cao Cao's sphere of influence, Yuan Shao defeated the forces of Gan Sun Zan and built up immense power, overcoming the camaraderie that the former allies felt, and each believing the other to be a liability. Cao Cao and Yuan Shao advanced their armies to battle at Guangdu. All right, what's wrong, Xu Chu? What isn't wrong, Sha Hu Dun? I just feel so bad about what's going on. Lord Cao Cao fighting his friends. No. Oh. It can't be avoided. An enemy is an enemy, former friend or not. Yuan Shao has opposing goals. If Lord Cao Cao's goals differ, 
There's no way of avoiding a fight. Wow, I'm impressed. I think you're right. I can't believe how well you seem to understand Lord Cao Cao's thinking. Well, that is as far as my understanding goes. And besides, when it comes to my cousin, who could understand his convoluted dreams? Right, so maybe after seeing how that voice actor tackled Shu Chu, you can see that maybe that's one of the most offensive available vocal portrayals of a fat person. Like, that's that's so much worse than anything else I can think of. So much worse than Big the Cat, even. Like, wh wow. So this level is probably the one where, uh, if you weren't aware that you had to grind, you'd probably learn that you had to grind. It can be rough. You got two giant swaths of enemy forces attacking two bases, and then they'll march up towards your main base from different directions. You kind of you kind of need to grind a little before you tackle this one on normal difficulty. But after you're in an adequate level, there's a lot of fun ways to tackle this. Like, you can hop back and forth between the two bases that are under assault and and push back the enemy until they just exhausted all of their options, or you can just push through one side and then cut off the enemy forces by capturing all of the bases around them, or you can just head straight to the main enemy camp and rush to defeat the big boss before the enemy forces reach your main camp. It's fun. There's fire erupting everywhere. The first time I beat this level it was with Nathan. We were in co-op and we didn't really do any grinding before, and it was not easy. Don't think we would have managed it at all without co-op. We actually didn't win the level by going to the enemy base and capturing the enemy base. We won the level by standing directly in front of the main gate to our own main base and just killing every officer that came our way, barely hanging on. And eventually we just we just killed the guy you need to kill to end the level. In bases you've captured, health pickups will spawn periodically, so we basically just tagged in and out. Like, one of us would kill an officer, and then we'd tag out and go get the health. And the other person would take a turn. And it was surreal how far removed our victory was from the intended way to achieve victory. Like, there's multiple ways you can achieve victory, but all of them... All of them, uh, involve, like, actually going to the enemy camp and capturing it. I imagine... I don't think that Koei imagined that you would just hang out near your own main base and wait for everyone to come to you and just play tower defense. And I'm actually super curious how many maps it's possible to do that on. Like how many maps you can just wait out by your primary camp for literally all of the enemy officers to funnel directly toward you. Because I'm pretty sure that they don't do that in all of the maps. In this one, every enemy officer seems to eventually make their way to your main camp if you wait long enough. Or if you're just really bad at, at killing enemy officers in time. But I don't think they do that on every level. It is also worth noting that this this level was particularly frustrating to play in co-op because of because of the darkness. This level's a bit darker than all the others. And in co-op, it's already split screen, so it's a little harder to see everything as is. I mean, there are a lot of things I kind of want to figure out about this game in addition to whether you can just wait at your main camp for a majority of levels. I also want to know, like, if you turn the game on easy and just let the enemy officers fight each other, is, is there going to be a victor? Like, is there going to be a, a clear winner without your input? Actually, those two things might be experiments worth undertaking for most Musou games, and not just Dynasty Warriors 6, but, you know. This is an easy place to get lots of experience early on, by the way. After you've beaten this level the first time, you can just run up to this enemy camp and uh, beat the shit out of Yuan Shao over and over. And you'll get a pretty decent amount of experience for it, enough to at least beat Zhao Hudun's story. 
Also, I've mentioned playing the levels in different ways and understanding how the game works and how that can add to your enjoyment a few times now, but there are also missions that the game gives you, completely optional missions you can complete that give you additional experience and shit. And you know, playing the levels through multiple times to figure out how to best reach those mission objectives is its own kind of fun, if you're into that sort of thing. I'm sure a lot of people are. These results should suffice for now. Greetings to you, Shahudun. You've done well. Yuan Shao is gone. The times are changing, and no one's left from the old guard to stand in the way. Now the true fight really begins. That is what I suspect is the case. You're as smart as ever. You're right. You have realized what the true purpose behind my battle is. But still, I don't see what lies beyond the battle. Cousin, will you not even tell me? There is a time and a place for everything. It is still much too early to speak of the future I wish to build. You and your secrets, Cao Cao. Well, I guess I'll just have to end this chaos. That should help to get everything out into the open. Having broken Yuan Zhao, Cao Cao came to tower over the other great generals. Cao Cao attained the position of Prime Minister and moved south to take the province of Jing. He took advantage of the struggle to succeed Lieutenant Governor Liu Biao and easily took the province. Meanwhile, Liu Bei, who had been staying in Jing province, fled with his loyal followers towards Yanlei in order to escape the clutches of Cao Cao. Fearing that Liu Bei would establish a power base, Cao Cao immediately organized a force to hunt down Liu Bei and set out on his trail. And so Liu Bei stands against you. I wish we had destroyed both Liu Bu and him at Xia Pi. We made a decision. It was the right one. I do not have any regrets whatsoever in what we chose to do. He attracts people to him. That is Liu Bei's gift. It's a skill to be envied. It is also one to be feared. Compassion alone will not remedy this chaotic world. Things will just repeat themselves over and over again. <sighs> As usual, talking about this makes my head hurt. Anyway, all that matters to me is knowing that he's interfering with your plans. Nothing else concerns me. I will be back soon. Ha! Alright, so this level, uh, I've only ever played the one way. Liu Bei wants to get to the boats and leave. We can't let him get to the boats and leave. That's the overall objective. So I just ride my horse directly to Liu Bei and beat the shit out of him while his entire army is breathing down my neck. And when he dies, we win. I'm sure there are many ways to achieve the goal 
of stopping Liu Bei before he reaches the boats. But I'm I'm all for the most direct approach in this circumstance. I got a strong, fast horse. I can reach him and kill him in time. Let's just do that. Let's not worry about any of this other stuff everyone's talking about. Something I really do love about this level, though, is the pathfinding. I like looking at the minimap and, you know, figuring out the best possible way to reach Liu Bei and how to get there in the optimal time frame, looking at what obstacles are in my path, occasionally smacking some pedestrians along the way. And, you know, it's all very scenic. all takes place during the most gorgeous time of day. There's not, there's not a lot not to love about this stage, I think. And uh, while we're on this scenic trip to kill the Yu Bay, we should talk about the music in Dynasty Warriors. I really, really love the music, and I think it's Dynasty Warriors 7, especially Trick and Magic. Trick and Magic is definitely my favorite. And in Dynasty Warriors 8, almost all of the ambition mode music is something I love. Final game in particular, which gets me real excited. So yeah, for Dynasty Warriors 7, there's Trick and Magic and Teary Edge. For Dynasty Warriors 8, pretty much all of the Ambition Mode music, but especially Final Game. But for 6, I can only think of like one track I actually really like. And it's Tropical Wars. Which is a weird name for that track, but all of the tracks in Dynasty Warriors 6 have odd names. So This isn't the level where Tropical Wars plays, by the way. I just felt like talking about the soundtrack while we're on our our smashing Liu Bei's face in tour. Hitting him with our horse deals a lot of damage, by the way. It's just not easy. He kind of dodges out of the way a lot. It's much easier to hit him when we're off our horse, but we also deal less damage than we do while we're on our horse. So being on the horse is, is better in some ways. of my lord's dream, I fight! I battle for justice! The spear of Xiao Yu shows no mercy! Something that's been on my mind lately as I've gone back to making videos more frequently again is that you really gotta, like, stretch your analytical muscles, or you'll lose them. I'm not saying that my spectacular vocabulary or analytical prowess has simply died out, like one's life force during a sandstorm scattered to the wind, but I am saying that it's a little harder, noticeably, to analyze things than it was when I did this more frequently before. The reason I bring this up is because even though I think, I'd like to think, I'm pretty decent at analyzing game design and talking about design and mechanics and developers' thought processes and such, and the artistic value the game design holds, it is the case that for a brief period I was at least a little bit good at talking about visual design, even though for years I never saw the purpose of getting good at it. And that's almost completely gone. And then there's music. I listen to, like, a lot of music. And I know when I hear music I like in something. But I can't, I can't talk about music at all. There, I have nothing of value to add to any conversation about music. I can tell you that even though it doesn't look great that I'm just mashing square to kill the Yubei right now and stunlocking him to death, I thought it was pretty satisfying to do that. It felt good to do. 
Most Dynasty Warriors games require a bit of a different approach to tackling officers than that, but when you finally get them in an infinite square combo chain, it feels like a... Feels like you know what's going on. Feels like you're vibing with the game. You know you've got victory in your palms. These results should suffice for now. Please forgive me, cousin. I was unable to capture him. It doesn't matter. He has been driven from Jing and lost most of his forces. That alone was worth it. Hmm. It is a full moon tonight, isn't it? Shaho Dun, come along and we'll drink together. I feel the moon calling me. I have spent much of this life that heaven has granted to me out on the fields of battle. Hmm. <laughs> That's not like you. I too am a human being. I grieve for all the wasted lives. However, Within my vision there lies a greatness, beyond the worth of life. A vision that exceeds all the worth of life itself. You don't lack for ambition, do you? I have a destiny of my own, to help create this world of yours. With Cao Cao's generals in pursuit, Liu Bei made his escape to Jianling. Following that, Cao Cao suffered a crushing defeat to Liu Bei and Sun Quan at Qi Di and brought the conquest to a halt. In the meantime, Liu Bei took Yi province, thrusting the nation into the age of the three kingdoms of Wei, Wu, and Zhu. Rumors that Cao Cao, now a chancellor, was vying for the throne caused tumult throughout the land. Also, as if meaning to take advantage of such domestic troubles, Sun Quan came to assault Heifei. Xia Hudun rode his horse toward the battlefield to put an end to this enemy. Master Shaho Doom, do you know what our Lord truly plans? Hmm? The rumors about the Emperor? Exactly. Firstly, what does he think of this? Is this even what he wants to have happen? Who can say? I have known him for ages, and even I cannot say what he is thinking most times. And yet, whether he accepts the throne or not, I believe that he will remain himself. He won't change. That is why we too must not change. As commanding officers will fulfill our duties. The enemy will bring its main force against us. Your duty is to stop them. Indeed it is. I can see why our Lord has kept you by his side so long. Oh hey, it's the level where Tropical Wars plays. 
I love Tropical Wars, as was previously discussed. It is my favorite track in Dynasty Warriors 6. This is also my favorite level in Zhao Hudun's story. It is my favorite level because just look at the layout. It looks like some kind of fucked up insect monstrosity, that mini-map right there. And there's so many different ways to attack this level from so many different angles. And there's so many different angles for your enemies to attack from, which they will gladly take advantage of. This is one of those levels where, you know, like, you, you turn away for a minute and you're like, how did that enemy get up there so close to my main camp? And you're like, oh wow, I didn't even notice that road was there before. I gotta watch that road from now on. Stuff like that. Stuff like that's why I love this level. There's just a lot to keep track of. There's a lot of ways to approach the situation. There's a lot of ways to get fucked. It's a good time. This level also has my favorite lighting, my favorite visual design, and I love the emphasis on castles and bridges in this one. Gives it sort of a medieval knight's vibe, even though we're in China. Just really love almost everything about this level. Strikes the right balance between stressful and engaging, and it engages me in multiple ways. All the ways I would like to be engaged by Dynasty Warriors 6. Engages me in the basic combat, engages me in the pathfinding, engages me in the strategic thinking. Engages me in the music. Which I still cannot describe to you why I think is good. Stop. But I think it's mostly related to that bit right there. I can't explain to you why I like final games so much. Final game sounds like you, the player character, is being battered to fucking death by oppositional forces which you could not possibly hope to overcome. You cannot even imagine the girth of these enemies being poured down on you like a fat thunderstorm. The multitudinous monstrosities that these villains from beyond the ether are intending to inflict upon your physical form cannot possibly be overstated in their severity and brutality. But the song says, you don't fucking give a shit. You're gonna take it all in the face and keep going. And that's why I like Final Game from Dynasty Warriors 8 so much. But see, that's just me describing how I feel about it. About how I feel like it's about you overcoming the adversity you're facing in like a really dramatic way that personally connects with me on a primal level. I, I, I didn't, like, use any music terminology or anything to describe that. Music is just a language that I do not really comprehend and could probably never hope to, frankly. But I appreciate that it's basically the cleanest way to inject emotions directly into someone's brain. That's something that no one can take away from music. Unfortunately, there are a few circumstances in life, I imagine, where music cannot alter your emotional state. Sometimes there are things that are just too intense that are going on for the right song to fix. No matter how many times you play It's On by Super Chick, maybe that's just not going to get you through this bout of incredible physical pain you're experiencing right now, and there's no shame in that. Speaking of uh, analyzing things, I like to think I'm pretty good at analyzing stories and character development, and character motivations, and story structures and such. But that's significantly easier than analyzing video games and game design. There's just so many more variables to account for in game design. They're, they're barely comparable. I'm not saying that, like, analyzing stories or linear media is of any less value than analyzing game design. Something being more difficult does not inherently make it more valuable, but the amount of variables definitely is a large factor in the difficulty of analyzing something. And with linear media, there's just so much less of that, just by virtue of linear media not being interactive. Even if you're playing, let's say, a kinetic visual novel with no traditional video game interactivity, there's still so much more that can, that can be said about the interactivity in that and how it plays into the pacing and perception of the story and characters. Even the ability to toggle auto mode on or off comes with its own set of nuances. Face the 
Like, does having auto mode enabled directly affect how much agency the player feels they have? Of course they have none in a kinetic visual novel without choices, but would it still affect a feeling of agency? I think it might. What about if you got voice clips? If the auto mode cuts off voice clips early, that would greatly affect how they view the characters and, if, and possibly massively harm their suspension of disbelief. But would it frustrate them? If the voice clips played before auto mode triggered the next text box? If the text displays differently when you use the log in a visual novel, will that affect how the players remember the events and the inflection that the, uh, the dialogue was originally supposed to have? Will the speed at which your text fucking displays affect how the players read the line and understand its intention? These are, like, all things that usually you have control over as the player, even when it's a kinetic visual novel with no choices. And unlike with movies, when it's pretty clear you're doing something wrong by watching it at two times speed, or watching it with the voices disabled, or have it so that way scene transitions disappear, like obviously that's wrong if you're watching a movie that way. Visual novels don't suppose that any of that's wrong. That's just a normal method you can use to interact with that medium. And all of it's so vastly different, and gives you such a completely different experience. And the game design comes into play by choosing which options the player should have, and how they access those options, and to what degree they're allowed to access those options. Like, maybe you don't want them to be able to turn on auto mode, or maybe you only want them to be able to trigger the next text box after the voice clip has fully completed. Maybe you don't even want to give them access to a log. Or maybe you want to give them access to a log, but it replays an entire scene so that way you get all the surrounding context appropriately. Maybe you have quick saves and loads disabled because you feel like it interrupts the flow of the game and breaks the continuity, ruins the immersion. And again, unlike movies where you have access to the fast forward and rewind and speed up and slow down and skip chapter features anytime just because you have a TV remote, you don't get access to those features if the developer doesn't want you to have them in a visual novel, unless you go in and put them in there yourself. Even though by the nature of being interactive, it's really hard to force people to experience video games the way you might want them to, it's also like a medium where it's really hard to experience the games the way you would like to, unless you go out of your way to learn how to fuck with the game from the inside. It's just such a completely different dynamic from passive, linear media. Like I said, even though you have permanent access to the ability to fuck with the flow of any movie you ever watch, it's pretty obvious to people that there's a way you're supposed to watch those movies. With video games, you don't fucking get that. And like, sometimes the developer will try to tell you how you're supposed to experience, or experience it or the optimal way you should go, but sometimes... You know, that uncertainty is even baked into the game design, as sort of the appeal of it. And sometimes there are both. Sometimes the game wants to tell you exactly how you should experience it, and it tells you this either through game design, or through the developer speaking to you through tutorials. And then other times it'll be like, figure this shit out for yourself, in the same game, sometimes even in the same minute, or across the span of multiple minutes or hours. Video games are a fucking trip. There's so much more to consider than can even be explained reasonably. It's such a complex ballet, a dance, an interaction between the developers and the people playing the games. Sometimes the players don't even speak remotely the same language of physical interactivity that the developers were, and this leads to beautiful situations where the seams of the developer's understanding and the art of the game just sort of rip open. And as is the nature with varying disparate equilibriums, you can see sort of a ton of unstated assumptions just flow forth. Not unstated assumptions about how someone might perceive a line of dialogue or some such thing, but an unstated assumption about how someone might interact with a world. About how the creators of that world perceive your place in their world and how you perceive your place in it. 
and how each action you take is diverting from the canon of the game in your own method, and no two people will ever play a game exactly the same way, creating a sort of unique art for each person that experiences it. And that's why I think that gameplay is inherently transformative, and anybody who tells you that uploading gameplay footage of their game is copyright infringement is lying, because by playing the game you are creating your own art. You are influencing the game with your input. It is no longer their art anymore, it is now just as much yours. With movies and shit, I gotta like, put my feelings to words in order to make my own art from that art. Like, I gotta, I gotta voice my criticisms and shit. But I can make my own art out of Dynasty Warriors 6 just by fucking playing it. Just by moving around in it. I'm making my own story, my own narrative, my own world inside of this pre-existing world. Yes, I do think about this shit all the time. Thank you for noticing. The philosophical implications of having interactive art are goddamn staggering to me, and this shit occupies so much of my thought process. These results should suffice for now. fell at Heifei. Only two great generals remained. Cao Cao, who had subjugated most of China, and Liu Bei, who persistently obstructed Cao Cao's conquest from his base in the land of Chu. In the back of everyone's mind was the thought that this would be the time to decide the victory. The rumors about Cao Cao's aspirations to the throne stopped when the man himself denied them. Cao Cao fought not to attain the station of emperor, but for something else. Supporting that goal was Xiao Hudun's duty as an officer. With his head full of emotion, he proceeded to the final battlefield. Even the feared one-eyed general is but a child before me. It is your turn, Xiao Hudun. Go. I have no chance of winning against your cunning. I have heard that you refused the throne. I've grown tired of all this waiting. Tell me, cousin, what is this world that you envision? A land where people of talent and vision can change the world. A land where neither emperor nor lord is needed. You've answered my question. Knowing you, I should have expected it was something like that. <laughs> At last, the light that shines upon this lone eye has taken a form that I understand. Give me time, cousin. I shall bring an end to all of this fighting. All of your dreams are destined to come true! It's time for the last level of Zhao Hudun's story. I don't really remember much about this level. 
I don't remember liking it very much. Which is unfortunate, because it's the last level. We gotta be here. It's kind of important. It's the climax of the story and all that. But, uh... Assuming the, uh... The iron hasn't cooled too much. I'm gonna add one more thing to that rant about video games as a medium. Well, I don't know if rant's the right word. It was... I was excited in a positive way, but... Just gonna add one more thing. That's, uh... All that stuff I was talking about, that's kind of why... Every video game is a beautiful experience to me. It's a unique chance to experience a world that other people have made, and it took them thousands of hours to make, probably. It's a unique chance to be a part of that. To experience that world for yourself. And no matter how limited your interaction with that world may be, it's still a different world. And that applies as much to me for fairly straightforward beat-em-ups as it does to shit like The Witcher 3. Every game is an open-ended experience with tons of shit to discover. And I want to I want to see so much of it. I want to experience it all. Except for maybe RTSs, just because I'm not a big fan of that genre. We all have our tastes. But yeah, so I really love video games. I love films, too. Films aren't, like, worse or anything. But the nature of video games being interactive art inherently makes them the most appealing form of art to me. I hope this is what you were looking for, Big J, when you asked me to play 24 hours of Musou games. I'm doing what you asked. Exactly what you asked. But at some point we gotta come down from that high, the high that I was writing, and probably no one else, and uh, focus on Dynasty Warriors 6 again. I've already said that I feel like Dynasty Warriors 6 is very arcadey, and that's mostly for presentational reasons. Like the way the, the KO count is stylized and how it ticks up and down. The Rinbu gauge. Everything but the minimap really makes this game feel like I'm playing it in an arcade. Like in a big arcade cabinet. While I'm waiting for my pizza to hurry up and get, get done so I can eat my goddamn pizza. Or better yet, this is one of those arcade cabinets at a pizza buffet. In which case, I've already eaten my pizza. And I'm like, you know... I can't think of a better way to celebrate having eaten a fuck ton of pizza than to play goddamn Dynasty Warriors 6 on a giant arcade cabinet. Speaking of Musou games and arcade cabinets, I don't know whether that's actually happened in any official capacity, maybe a pachinko machine or something, but... So as I was saying, Musou games and arcade cabinets. How do you guys feel about Gauntlet Legends? Because I seem to recall Gauntlet Legends being an arcade game. I think it's also on the 64, but it is an arcade game. And if I recall correctly, there are a large number of enemies. And it's sort of like a crowd control beat em up, just like Dynasty Warriors, but obviously more difficult because it's an arcade game and it wants to suck your quarters. But would you guys call... Gauntlet Legends a Musou game. I have a pretty lenient definition for Musou game. Like, I would consider Dynasty Warriors Strike Force a Musou game still. Well, for one, I mean, for one thing, it has Musou in the name, but. I would also consider Run Arc or Growl. Uh, look that up. The arcade version, not the Genesis version. I would also consider that a Musou game for sure. Like, just look at the number of enemies on screen at any one time. And how the focus is on destroying large swaths of enemies and occasionally fighting a particularly powerful enemy officer called a boss battle. 
Really, most of what makes a Musou game a Musou game to me is the number of enemies on screen and the satisfaction that is meant to be obtained from destroying large amounts of enemies. And that's why, why I wouldn't really call things like, uh... Call things like McFarlane's Evil Prophecy a Dynasty Warriors game or a Musou game, because even though there are occasionally large numbers of enemies, your combos are not really meant to hit multiple enemies. And you're not really supposed to destroy too many of them at once. Your approach is really meant to be more methodical, thinking about like how your combo will affect specific enemies that are directly in front of you, sort of like Ultimate Alliance, even though you can definitely hit more than one, and there's at least one combo that's used for specifically crowd control per character. That's why I'm asking if you think Gauntlet Legends is a Musou game, because I have not played it since I was a child in arcades. Like, for all I know, it's just like McFarlane's Evil Prophecy or Marvel Ultimate Alliance, where there are occasionally large numbers of enemies, but you're really only supposed to focus on one. I mean, focus on killing one at a time, or two at a time, specifically, because in beat-em-ups you usually have to focus on every enemy, it's just you don't usually focus on killing multiple enemies at the same time, with just one combo, or a series of combos that scoop them all up. Regardless, it, uh, it seems like we're about reaching the end of our adventures in Jahu Dune's Wonderland. I hope you all had a good time here, watching me play Dynasty Warriors 6, which I still love, even though as was discussed early in the video, there are quite a few things that turn most people off from the game, especially fans. As I've already said, I think the change to the combo system just makes combat with enemy officers a lot more, uh, a lot more interesting, because I already knew how to deal with enemy officers in other Musou games, and now I gotta rework my brain to deal with them with the new combat system. And this new combat system may be simpler, but it's still a different flavor. can still come here to get a different experience than I would get from the other Dynasty Warriors games. And sometimes I want that experience. Oh, and just a bit of trivia. In most mainline Dynasty Warriors games, if not all of them, you can hold down circle to make your muso last longer, or just tap it if you want your muso to end really quick and save some of your meter. And the muso goes as long as you hold the circle button, as long as you have bar for it. I did not know this until Nathan told me just like a few weeks ago. I didn't even know about this incredibly basic mechanic of the game. Whoopsie. And while we're filling the last couple minutes of, uh of this video with bomb drops. Did you know the commentary for this video you're watching is composed of hundreds of individual mp3 files? Many of which were removed because I didn't like the way that 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 my with the commentary came across in them. Like normally I would have deleted that but I didn't this time. The way I make videos I get the impression is not the way most people make game videos but that's fine. As long as it comes out the way I want it to, right? That's what really matters. Okay, Liu Bei's taking a really long time to die, so what if we just skip to when he's dead and then you can watch the ending, okay? That sounds nice to me. Let's do that. I have lost. Bring peace to the people. Another victim has fallen to my plague. Behold, Liu Bei. I shall guide the land where it must go. Everybody, the land has long been in chaos, but we have freed it. Victory is ours. These results should suffice for now. This should put an end to the fighting. A new world where neither emperor nor lord is needed to rule the land. But cousin, will it work out? The people of this land will revere you. Like the emperor you say the land does not need. I begin to understand. So cousin, we part ways. Let the victory cheer you as you journey to your destiny.
Brother Doom! Do you know where our Lord has gone? I can't find him, and I've looked everywhere. I see. So he has left already. Hmm? Yuan, Cao is no longer here. By now, he is somewhere under the starry sky. Huh? Are you kidding? <sighs> oh well. That's our lord. Unpredictable. In this brand new land, we must carry on without an emperor or a Cao Cao to lead us. And we must give it the chance to grow as it will. We conquered this world of chaos alongside Lord Cao Cao. And now we will let you go in peace. Farewell, cousin.